So the first thing you want to do when you're figuring out the distribution of a discrete random variable is to write down all the different values that variable can take. So in our case, x can either be negative 1, 1, 2, or 3, because that's all the different uh, amounts that the player can win or lose, right? So then we want to find out what's the probability of each of these events occurring. So what's the probability that x equals minus 1? Well, if we roll three dice, so it doesn't matter what number you choose, right? Because to choose a number 1 to 6, we're assuming that all the dice are fair, so all the numbers are equally likely to occur. So let's say you choose the number 1. The number of times that 1 occurs in three dice, well, that, that follows a binomial distribution. So the probability that you lose 1 is the same as the probability that 0 1s appear in three dice. So what's the probability of that? The probability is 5, 6 to the power of 3. So we could uh, just plug that into a calculator. We find out that's about 0 0.5, it's 0 0.5787. So it's the probability that x equals 1. Well, again, it's a binomial distribution. So we just have 3 choose 1, which is 3, times 1 6 to the power of 1, times 5 6 to the power of 2. And that's about 0.3472. Same thing for probability of x equals 2. We have 3 times 1 6 to the power of 2 times, sorry, 5 6 to the power of 1. And the probability of x equals 3, well, that's 1 6 to the power of 3. Oh six nine four. Oh oh four six. So a good thing to do at this point would be to add all these together and make sure they add up to one. They might be off by a tiny little bit due to rounding errors, but it should be really close to one because that's what makes a valid probability distribution. So then next, what's the probability that x is greater than or equal to two? Well, x can take on these values with these probabilities. And these events are mutually exclusive. You can't win one and win two at the same time. So the probability of that x is greater than or equal to two, that's just the probability that x equals two plus the probability that x equals three. So back here, we just add these two together. That's all that is. Just add these two together. It's a probability of 2 plus the probability of 3. And then the third one, what's the expected value of x? So to do this, we just need to take all of these values and multiply them by their respective probabilities and add them together. So it's, it'll be negative 1 times 0.5787 plus 1 times 0 0.3472 plus 2 times 0 0.0694 plus 3 times 0 0.0046. And you can figure out what that is on a calculator. I'm not going to uh, actually calculate this, but that, that's this is what the expected value is. So then what's the standard deviation of x? Well, let's start by finding the variance of x. And to find the variance of x, you want to start by finding the expected value of x squared. Because the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. So we know what this is. This is just this whole thing. So to find the expected value of x squared, we go back here and write down these values again, but this time square them. So we have one squ negative 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. And then we have the, the same probabilities we had before, 0 0.5787, 0 0.3472, etc. Write those down here and then take this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this. So 
and you'll get expected value of x squared, subtract the expected value of x squared, and then that will be the variance of x. Then you take the square root of that, that's how you find the standard deviation. So the standard deviation of x is equal to the square root of the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. So I hope this helped. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.